It is July the 12th, 2021. I'm Andy, and this is the Menorcan Mullet Report from the Port of Brunswick today. Well, you guys have been asking for it, and we got back, and the weather was nice, so we put the drone up over at the port to take a closer look at Section 3. Now, Section 3, this is uh, the first section that they've separated uh, from the rec since the big fire back on May the 14th. And uh, the video, uh, when, we've, when we get around and start flying down and you can see that fire damage, uh, the vehicles that were burnt there, but really how it's contained to uh, just those particular decks and how the, uh, the system of, of the ship construction uh, for containing fires worked really, really so well uh, even with the ship, um, you know, on its side uh, and in the sound. And it's it's very interesting to look in there and see how that fire affected those vehicles and the massive mess that it made. Well, we can see there the cradle that, that they constructed uh, to set this piece on the floating dock system. Now, this is uh, kind of different you know, before uh, the previous pieces were set on the barges. Uh, this piece was put on to a dry dock section. This, this system is designed to actually submerge into the water, uh, ship floated over it, and then it raises up, it's pumped out, and raises up to pick those uh, uh, vessels up out of the water. And um, the system was utilized here to receive um, this uh, section uh, three. And if, from what we understand, uh, the dry dock systems, systems will be used uh, for the remaining sections of the Golden Ray that are uh, still out in the St. Simon Sound. Uh, three sections left to be picked up, two cuts to be, ma to be made uh, to uh, yield those three pieces um, and, of course, cutting done with the VB-10,000. Uh, you can certainly see as that chain uh, was pulled through the decks of the Golden Ray and just how it peeled that metal back and just kind of ripped and tore those pieces uh, to, uh, to finally break free and get, it, get the section separated. And we know that there was some additional cutting that was that was done. Um, we're not sure if any of the blasting took place on this section. We know that uh, they have received approval to use those linear uh, shape charges to uh, help with the cutting. Um, we're not sure it was actually used on section three. Could have been. We're just not sure. But we can see some of these, how some of these cars were literally just cut right in two with that chain. Um, you know, when I originally uh, heard of this plan, I was thinking the chain might kind of flip the cars out of the way and they wouldn't, wouldn't work into the equation of, of really being cut. Uh, but you can see that that certainly was not the case. We, we see some that are, that are cut right in two. And, uh, you know, with the amount of vehicles that were stacked on top of one another, um, trying to uh, move anything on the bottom of the pile, uh, I'm sure it was virtually impossible uh, for anything. And the chain just had no option but to, but to just cut and rip right through it. And as part of that process, we can understand and see uh, the, the damage that's done to these cars and why the amount of debris that uh, comes out of the out of the ship and out of the uh, environmental barrier and makes its way onto the beaches. Um, and how you can really see how it, that that trash is generated uh, with the uh, cutting system in place uh, to uh, yield these sections of ship. Again, the the water line. And understand that we have about a seven to nine foot range of tidal influence here in coastal Georgia. But you can really see in there on the vehicles which ones were submerged and which ones were above that waterline. 
mainly because you don't see the marine growth on those that were uh, not immersed into uh, the water. There's so many vehicles stacked up in there, and uh, you know the system by which these things are latched down onto the ship. They're not not designed uh, to su kind of support the vehicles in a vertical mode. They're just you know there to keep the the cars in place while they're being uh, transported on the ship, keep them from rolling into one another if the, if the seas get heavy. And we can, we can see that a lot of those uh, strap systems just didn't hold at all. Some, in some places, we do see some that are still kind of hanging in there uh, on the decks. But for the most part, most of them made them down, down towards that, uh, what would have been the uh, port side of the ship and kind of stacked against that, that wall as the ship lay on that side. But there's a good shot right at the hull, and you can see how that metal is just ripped up by the force of that uh, anchor chain uh, being pulled by that block system on the VB-10,000 to rip and tear it. It's, not, it's, it's really not a cut. It's more of a, a rip and a tear and a, just a, a violent reaction. Um, and also, when we fly in and kind of look at this, uh, these decks, you know, some of these decks are movable inside the ship, and we can see those uh, deck systems that were kind of broken loose, and they're laying at different angles uh, inside of the uh, of the ship. As we kind of get in here, you're going to really see uh, some of these vehicles that suffered uh, so much of the fire damage uh, from the fire, and it's it's clear where that fire was and uh, how it affected those vehicles that were involved in the fire. Now, understand this is this was towards the bow of the ship, and it uh, probably where the fire started, but as the wind drove the fire that day, you know, most of the fire load ended up coming out of what used to be the stern area of the ship. 
that's a great video. Uh, if you guys uh, haven't seen it yet, May 14th, yeah, you can click on the content section of the, of the channel page and, and pull up May 14th. And we've got a lot of footage from that fire uh, that occurred. Uh, and that was uh, about three quarters of the way through uh, the cut on section three. And of course, after the fire, we had a pretty significant delay with uh, repairs that had to be made and inspections that had to be made to the ship as well as the cutting apparatus, the VB-10,000, uh, some repair, some nylon, or I shouldn't say nylon, I'm sure it's uh, Dyneema or uh, some very modern uh, material that makes up those straps that attach to those lifting points on, on the ship. Uh, to get these uh, sections raised and placed on these uh, dry dock systems. You know, it might be kind of fun to try to identify some of these things, uh, some of these vehicles in here. Um, maybe we should say do that in the comments. You know, let us know what you see in there as far as vehicles. We'll see how many car savvy folks we have out there that can identify uh, these things. I'm not sure that these, uh, the ones that suffer the fire damage are gonna be identifiable, but wow, what an intense inferno inside of these compartments. And we also understand how difficult it was to extinguish the fire with so many vehicles piled up on one another and if you have the fire, the seat of the fire down in that mass of vehicles, trying to get water in, into those, uh, onto those uh, burning vehicles must have been extremely difficult for the crews uh, that day uh, to try to extinguish it. But here, uh, we can definitely see a car that was both submerged and above the waterline.
you know, it might be fun to try to guess how many vehicles are still inside of Section 3 here, uh, with the exception of this one vehicle that has fallen out under the deck of the dry dock system. Uh, I wonder how many are in there. Uh, you know, keep in mind uh, that some of the vehicles were extracted in part of the weight shedding operation uh, where they took that grapple out and they reached in and they pulled out what they could reach in an effort to try to lighten the load. Uh, you got to keep in mind that uh, the amount of silt, sand, sediment that uh, it's been collecting in the, in, the, in the car and in the ship, all that adds additional weight. Uh, so they, they went out and they pulled out as many cars as they could with the grapple to try to lighten this section of the ship. Uh, and we expect to see that continue on uh, with the remaining sections that are still in the sound. Well, as we fly over the lifting lugs here, th these are the parts where the straps attached uh, to the section to actually lift it and hold it in place and then place it on the dry dock. We're going to ask you if you haven't done it yet, please click on that subscribe button. And send us some comments. We've got a lot. If you watch this video, there's a lot to comment about. We'd love to hear some comments on what you guys think. Uh, and most of all, we want you guys to stay safe out there.